Greetings from Kenwall. Today is Wednesday, January 25th, 2023. Last week I told you I went in for that ultrasound um, for my liver and my kidneys, and I thank God that everything came back normal. Still doesn't tell me why my ferritin level is so high at 1480, but I have a few more tests and hopefully we'll find an easy fix. I like what the ultrasound guy told me. He said, well, Ken, all you got to do is go out there and give blood. Because as soon as you give blood, your ferritin level will greatly decrease. And I thought to myself, I think I'm going to take him up on that. Now, over the next few weeks, I want to talk to you about some common heresies that are abounding in the Christian church. Today we are going to discuss whether Jesus is God or whether he was created. Now, you would think that all Christians would believe that Jesus Christ is God, but that is <laughs> not in any way what the evidence shows. In 2022, Arianism is making a comeback. According to a survey called the State of Theology Report. Now, for those of you who do not know what Arianism is, Arianism is the belief that Jesus was created by God. This belief, this theology, actually became very prominent in the fourth century by a Christian priest named Arius, hence Arianism. Arius was a very persuasive priest, and he led all sorts of people to believe what he was saying. At that time, there was this priest, actually a bishop, called Athanasius. He was very famous, and he said that Arians, Arius' teaching reduced the sun to a demigod. He reintroduced polytheism, since worship of the sun was not abandoned, and undermined the Christian concept of redemption, since only he who was truly God could be redeemed, could be deemed to have reconciled humanity to the Godhead. You know, this all came to head in the year 325 A.D., and what came to be known as the Council of Nicaea. And once and for all, it was settled at this council that Arius was a heretic and issued a, they issued a decree to safeguard Orthodox Christian belief. They stated categorically that Jesus is God and that the scriptures prove that he is God. But you know, Today, it's interesting, Arianism is once again resurfacing. In a 2022 survey among evangelicals in the U.S., a surprising 73% believe that Jesus is the first and greatest being created by God. Created by God, 73%. That fact just blew me away. I thought... There, when I read that, I thought there has to be some kind of mistake, 73%. Well, coupled with that, most of you know that all Jehovah's Witnesses, they believe that Jesus was created by God. And also, all Muslims and all Mormons believe that Jesus was created. This is a large percentage of people. Well. I don't have the fact for Canada, but in a 2020 survey conducted by the Ligon Ear Ministries, which is a Florida-based Reformed Church nonprofit group, they found that 52% of the general populace believe that Jesus is not God. You know, this is a belief, of course. It contradicts traditional teachings of the Bible through the Christian church, which states that Jesus was both man and God at the same time when he was on earth. As I said earlier, back in 325 AD, 
the Christian church unanimously stated that Jesus is God. I would like to tell you an experience I had with two Jehovah's Witness guys who came to my door just before COVID. <laughs> if you can remember that far back before COVID. Well, in a very loving way, I asked them if they believed that Jesus was created by God. They both said yes. I asked them if they would open their New Testament, not mine, their New Testament, and I got them to read the following passages. I started off with John 1 verse 2. It says he, of course Jesus, was in the beginning with God. All things were created through him, and without him was not anything that was made. I said to them, you look at this. It is really clear in John 1, 2 that Jesus created everything. So how is it possible that Jesus could possibly be created? The scripture is very clear that Jesus created everything. Then I got them to read Colossians 1, 16 and 17. It says, for in him, him of course, again being Jesus, for in him all things were created in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or authorities, all things were created through him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. I have to tell you, by this point, the two guys at the door, they're cringing. But I continued with John 10, 30, where it says, I and the Father are one. How can Jesus be created if God the Father and Jesus are one? They couldn't. They couldn't answer me. After this, they quickly retreated from my door. I bet they had wished that they had never come to my door. And another passage that I love about this is from Philippians 5, 6, and 7. And I'm reading this from the New Living Translation. It says, Though he was God, he did not think of equality with God as something to cling to. Instead, he gave up his divine privileges. He took the humble position of a servant and was born as a human being. The New Testament makes it so clear that Jesus is God. There is no way around it. The scriptures I read clearly tell us this. You know, as I was writing this, I took a break and I watched online the TV series, The Chosen, where Jesus heals the paralytic. If you remember the story, when Jesus first looks at the paralytic, he says, your sins are forgiven. I am sure this paralytic looking up, he said, well, Jesus, this, this is great that my sins are forgiven, but really, I love to be healed. But one of the main reasons Jesus said this, he was saying that he is God. And everyone around them, all the scribes and the Pharisees, knew that he was saying that he is God. When you read the scriptures, you will see that Jesus really is God. There is no way around it. May the good Lord be with you until we meet again.